Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Paul Wilson. Um, I'm here, although I'm uh, from APNIC, I'm here in uh, capacity as the chair of the Number Resource Organization Executive Council to talk about the latest uh, news from the uh, NRO. So the NRO defines itself as the flagship and global leader for collaborative internet, internet number resource management as a central element of an open, stable and secure internet. So we are here to, um, under that uh, mission, to coordinate activities among the five RIRs. These are joint activities which we feel that we need to do in the interests of um, the global number registry system. So we were formed uh, informally via an MOU, an informal memorandum of understanding amongst the RIRs uh, back in 2003. And in more detail, we serve to coordinate the RIR system and any joint RIR activities that we all decide to do. Uh, we are also in, involved with promoting the multi-stakeholder model and the bottom-up model of policy development that all of the RIRs support. And uh, one thing very specifically is that we fulfill the role, we perform the function of the ICANN Address Supporting Organisation, the, the ASO, and we've just heard uh, a fair bit about what the Address Council uh, is doing as part of that function. So you can find the NRO uh, online, nro.net. The structure of the NRO, it's an informal association, as I mentioned, it doesn't, it doesn't exist legally, it's only an agreement amongst the RIRs, but we have a number of structured committees. So the executive committee, the EC, uh, includes the five RIR CEOs. Uh, this year I'm the chair, Alan Barrett from Afrinec is the vice chair and secretary, uh, Axel Pavlik from Rope NCC is the treasurer, and Oscar and John are the other two members, and these positions rotate every year, so next year Alan will be, become the chair and the, and the list will shift. Uh, the secretariat of the NRO just looks after administrative functions on behalf of all of us. It's hosted at APNIC at the moment and run by Herman Valdez, who some of you will know, assisted by Susanna Gray. So Herman is the executive secretary of the, uh, of the NRO these days. Uh, what Herman helps to do is to um, support coordination groups. Uh, so we have formal coordination amongst the RIRs in the areas of communications, engineering, and registration services. So each of those committees has got at least one staff member from each of the RIRs who's responsible for those, um, for those functions, and they can work together in those groups uh, under those, uh, for those particular functions, uh, communications, engineering, and registration services. We also have other coordination in uh, public affairs, in policy, uh, finance, and legal matters. The NRO has got a number of publications. We have a quarterly report of the global internet number status. Uh, that's the stats on IPv4, V4, V6, ASNs, and all, the, all of the transactions involving those resources. And you can find that online. Uh, likewise, uh, online on the NRO website is something we call the comparative policy overview. So if you're interested in kind of working out how the RIRs differ on particular policy functions, for instance, allocations or transfers or memberships, uh, registration policies and so forth. You can look at that matrix and find out, for instance, how LACNIC would compare with any of the other four RIRs. So that's the comparative policy uh, matrix, and there's a similar one for RIR governance. So again, in terms of the way the RIRs operate, different aspects of gov governance to do with, for instance, the boards, the elections, and so forth, you can also find a comparative matrix there again, so that you could, if you liked, uh, you could compare uh, LACNIC with others, or others with others uh, as well. Finances uh, for the last year, the RIRs, uh, distribute the responsibility for NRO expenses according to a formula which recognises the total number of IPv4 addresses held by each RIR and the relative size of our budgets. And so we use a formula to then work out what is the respective responsibility of each RIR for NRO finances. LACNIC is responsible uh, for 10.42% of the uh, NRO finances last year in 2017. So those, um, those uh, expenses include a um, total general operations of 643,000, but that includes uh, $200,000 that we contribute collectively to the Internet Governance Forum. 
and uh, in addition there's a uh, contribution to ICANN of a total of $823,000 each year. So again, the responsibility for that, for that sum is distributed among the RARs proportionally. And that amount that we pay to ICANN includes about 625, I think it is, that goes to the, the PTI, the post-transition IANA structure for our IANA services. And the balance is just a, a voluntary contribution that we make uh, to ICANN uh, for supporting ICANN. We've also uh, made pledges. Each of the RARs has pledged a certain amount of money uh, into a provisional fund uh, for supporting the stability of the RAR system. And the idea of that is that if any RAR uh, becomes uh, in need of financial support, then we have a, a pledged fund that, uh, that would be available to allow, um, to allow that RAR to receive uh, support from the others. The IANA Review Committee, something that we've heard about uh, already today, so the, the point of that review committee is, is to uh, assist the NRO uh, in its review of the services that we receive from, from the IANA, from the, from the PTI. And it, uh, it includes three members from, from each region and it, it does its work publicly. So it, the review committee will receive reports from the IANA uh, that, and it will review those reports to make sure that IANA is functioning the way that we all expect IANA to function. And in case of any problem with IANA um, services or um, provision of uh, services to the RARs, then uh, the uh, review committee would help us to kind of ad address and solve those, uh, solve any problems that might exist. I'm glad to say there has been no uh, problems at all identified with IANA services provided to the RARs uh, so far. So the review committee members are here. Uh, for your information, the LACNIC members are Nicholas uh, Esteban and Ernesto from uh, LACNIC staff. The ICANN Empowered Community is something that came about with the reformation of the, uh, of the ICANN bylaws after the IANA transition. And the Empowered Community is something that allows us all as members of the ICANN community to actually take some very critical decisions in control of ICANN. It's a, it represents a significant amount of power that we share over the ICANN structure. So the ASO as part of the ICANN structure can participate in, um, in actions like uh, removing ICANN directors and other, um, other approvals and, and rejections of IANA board uh, decisions. And those are, those are things that, uh, that we now are capable of, um, of doing uh, through the ICANN empowered community. A number of NRO projects, so we, as I mentioned, we get together to do uh, projects and activities that are of mutual interest. Something that was announced uh, recently and completed recently was a transition in the RPKI from our prior trust anchor configuration to one which we call the all resources trust anchor. That's, uh, that's something if you want to find the details you can delve into it on the NRO website but the idea of that is to, to work together to simplify some aspects of the RPKI. Uh, there were also uh, projects on the reporting requirements that are coming from IANA slash PTI and those are the reports that go to the review committee. Uh, an ICANN project called the Identify Technology Health Indicators, the ITHI project, where we are collaborating with, with ICANN to set, to establish some consistent measures of the health of, uh, of IP address identifier, um, the registration system, along with other uh, identifiers that ICANN uh, manages. And the ASO review, we've heard a fair bit about the, the ASO review uh, already. Uh, but that review is being conducted, has been conducted under the terms of the, of the ASO MOU and the ICANN bylaws. And so uh, this is the, the second review that we have just um, received and we're currently processing now through the, through the uh, community consultations that you have, uh, you've heard about. So the, uh, about the, the ASO review, the NROEC and the ASOAC got, uh, did get together and we made an announcement where we accepted the results of the ASO review. So there were 18, uh, 18 recommendations and we accepted all of them, uh, including the 18th, which is the one, for the, um, the one that establishes the RAR community consultations which are going on at the moment. So that's all I have uh, for you from the NRO. Very happy to answer any questions uh, if there are any. Uh, now or later. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paul.